Amen. Thank you, Holly. Loved ones, welcome once more to Richville United Church of Christ. And today, amidst our Advent celebrations, we find ourselves on Gaudé Sunday. This is the midway point of our Advent journey as we make our way closer and closer to the annual commemoration of the birth of the Christ child. And at this point in the Advent season, we want to be a people of joy. As I often remind folks, Advent and Lent are mirror images of one another. They're both seasons of preparation and repentance. But this midway point during Advent, we really want Sunday, which is always a feast day, to be a day full of joy. For our Savior has come and is coming. So with that, as we get ready to enter into worship proper, we do want to take a few moments and lift up the calendar announcements, the, the mission and ministry of our church. So if you're joining us online, you can go to richvilleucc.com, scroll down a little bit, and you'll find today's bulletin, messenger insert, and a children's activity bulletin. In the meantime, we turn things now to the chair of our finance and stewardship committee, which is only appropriate because we got a meeting right after service, Ms. <laughs> Debbie Zelchek. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. If you'll take out your messenger, I have just a few highlights for the week uh, for us to take a look at. Uh, today is the monthly offering for OCWM. We do that, if you remember, once a month to offset our donations. And then we do have just a brief meeting after today to look at our budget for next year. Um, Tuesday, we were scheduled to have a finance and stewardship meeting, but that has been canceled along with Bible study on Wednesday and spiritual life on Thursday. So everybody's off the hook. You can do what you need to do this week. Next Sunday is our youth service Sunday and then also our kids program. So please plan to attend. Our kids have been putting in a lot of hard work and practice along with the leaders and be here to experience that. If you take a peek inside, um, today is the last day to donate gifts for the Perry Helping Perry, our Christmas outreach program. So please turn those in today. And then there's a bunch of other things in there that are important. I won't take time to go over those, but please um, look at the things that are in there, our golden charms, our Christmas Eve candlelight service. Um, and then keep the uh, dinner dates, February 5th and May 7th, on your calendar as well. We're always hungry, so those are good things to take care of. Does anybody else have anything from the congregation? Karen. Okay. Okay, so if you didn't hear that, the, the poinsettias for Christmas have all been taken care of and signed up for. Thank you for that, but if you still would like to get one, see her, and she can order extras. Anybody else? Karen. So Golden Charms on Tuesday, December 21st. You can make your reservation almost up to the last minute. The Sunday before of the Tuesday that's coming. Okay. And then they have great Christmas entertainment with Exalt. So please uh, contact. And food. Of course there's always food. All right. So see Karen about that. Anything else? All right. Thank you, Debbie. Dear friends, we are a people of peace, of hope, of expectation. So let us sing what is in our spirits with our opening hymn, Come Thou, Long Expected Jesus.
Amen. Please be seated. Friends, one of the great joys of our Advent traditions is one that was established just shortly before I got called to this congregation by Reverend Ed Shriver. And uh, what Ed did was he introduced this tradition of the Advent Lantern. And so what we do each week is we take the lights from our previous week's Advent candle, and that light, as we nurture it very carefully, is then shared with this church-shaped lantern. Good thing there's lots of light in Christ's community. This church-shaped lantern. And then this lantern is taken to home or facility-bound members of the congregation. And the Advent wreath litany is shared with them along with our love and our greetings. We are fortunate enough to have the Call to Care ministry team helping with that. And so this last week, the light of peace that we celebrated in our worship service was shared with Verdeen Mowry. And uh, fortunately, Kathy Dressler was able to go see Verdeen, and she wanted to share a few bits of greetings on behalf of Verdeen. Um, Verdeen was in good spirits and happy for the company. She's been experiencing a lot of back and hip pain and asks for your prayers. She wishes she could come to, in church, to church and enjoy service in person, um, and, but she does watch online. However, she's looking at the backs of your heads. She would much rather see your faces, and she does send her love. So, Kathy, thank you for representing the congregation, and praise God we have relationship with our folks even if they can't be here in person. Now, having mentioned the Advent wreath several times already, Let's get down to it. I invite forward to the chancel, the Schumacher family, who will be guiding us in our wreath lighting for this week. Would you please join me in the call to worship? We, the children of your holy city, and chosen people come singing and shouting, O oh God. With all our hearts, we want to rejoice and exalt in you. Bless us then, we pray. Remember that you can strip away judgment and turn back enemies. We know that you are present among us, so help us to rebuke the fear of disaster. Therefore, we pray to keep our hands strong. We trust that you give victory, and we will rejoice with gladness that your love is always renewing. Forgive us then, we pray, when we fail to sing in exaltation for your goodness. Help us to embrace the ways you want to remove disaster and reproach from us. As we expand the Advent flame, moving from hope to peace, and peace to today's candle joy, we ask the strength to trust that you will deal with the oppressors, save the lame, gather the outcast, and change all of their shame into praise, that your name would receive renown all the earth. Bring us home, dearest Lord. Collect us into your coming kingdom. Restore us to the rich and vibrant people you created us to be. We deal with darkness. You are the true and steadfast light. May we always be part of it, glowing and growing before all people. Amen.
Amen. As we find ourselves pregnant with the possibility of Christ's kingdom, we want to lean into what it means to be followers of the living word born in that manger. So we turn now, as always, to the center of Reformed Protestant worship, which is the reading and the hearing of God's holy word. I'll be reading to you this morning from the gospel according to Luke chapter 3, verses 7 through 18, the New International Version. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones, God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is ready at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then, the crowd asked. John answered, anyone who has two shirts should share with one who has none, and anyone who has food should do the same. Even tax collectors came to be baptized. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and proclaimed the good news to them. Thank you, Jeff. That's God's good, if challenging news to us, according to Luke's gospel. And we pray, as always, that the Lord would bless our reading, our hearing, our understanding, and most importantly, our application of this and all of Holy Scripture. Before we dive into our message time, we do first want to take a few moments and share God's love and truth with our youngest friends. So invite the kiddos forward to the chancel steps for our time together. <laughs> We're waiting for you. That works. Just watch the wreath, guys, okay? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I am a child of the Most High God, wonderfully and fearfully made. Amen. Very good. Let's do that first line again, and I'll tell you why in just a second. This is the day the Lord has made. We will. Yeah, one, two, three. We will rejoice. We're halfway through Advent. You know what that means? No? Yes? Maybe? Anyone want to take a guess? It's almost Christmas. Yeah, so we should be full of joy today. What are your, some of your favorite activities around Christmas time? That's right. Yes, that's an Advent tradition that comes out of uh, Latin uh, culture where you bake a cake with a baby doll of Jesus in it and you have to try and find Jesus as you make your way through the cake. Lou.
You make gingerbread houses every year as you get closer to Christmas time. Beautiful. Anybody else? Let's take one more. Baby, what's one of your favorite things about Christmas time? You made a chocolate chip house just like a gingerbread house. That's wonderful. Now, let me ask you guys a question. Other than baby Jesus doll in a cake, which sounds a little strange, but we understand why, right? What do those activities have to do with Christmas itself? They're fun. What's the point of all those activities? Bringing family together and spreading joy. Amen. Amen. That, that could have been the message today. Hallelujah. So all of these activities, they're great, right? But do they all always have something to do with Christmas itself? No, not always, do they? But they are designed like the gingerbread house or even an advent calendar. What does finding chocolate every day have to do with the birth of Jesus? All of it's supposed to get us more and more joyful as we get closer to celebrating Jesus' birthday. All right, let me ask you, do you guys know what these are? A strainer and a colander. Very good. What is the job of a strainer or a colander? You use it for cooking? Keep the food in or let the water out? Yeah, yeah. What else could we do with a colander or a strainer. If it's not about liquid, what else could it do? Yeah, hold the solids, right? So have you guys ever seen anybody panning for gold? Yeah? So panning for gold uses tools kind of like this, kind of like uh, a sifter. Or, or a colander, a strainer or a colander. And what they do is they sift, they pan for gold, right? The plates that you put into the rocks has holes at the bottom, and then you rinse all of the what off? All of the dirt, that right, that's right. And the little pieces of rock that aren't gold, they're going to fall through too. Well, the passage in the Bible that Mr. Jeff read for us a few moments ago it talks about sifting away all of the garbage that keeps us from the gold of Jesus' birthday. Some of you guys were here last week when we had the wet floor signs that got in our way on our way to Jesus. Well, John the Baptist this week in the Bible passage Jeff read, John the Baptist tells people if they want to get close to the coming Messiah, they've got to sift out the stuff that isn't part of Jesus' heart, Right? So, is it okay to have a gingerbread house? Absolutely. Especially when we remember that it's to bring family together in the joy of the coming Christ child. What are some things that maybe you think we should sift and get rid of during Christmas time that don't have much to do with Jesus' birthday? Presents? Oh, you know, a lot of people are going to feel bad hearing you say that. But what if we put too much emphasis on presents? Maybe we want to get rid of that. It's okay to have presents, right? Why do we bring presents? What's the point of Christians giving each other presents at Christmas time? To spread joy. And we, Trin, give back to the people who, who love us and we want to thank. We also do it to remember the gifts that were brought to Jesus at Epiphany when the, three magi, when the magi showed up with their three gifts. So, again, we want to get rid of stuff like, I don't know, Pushing and shoving on Black Friday. You guys know what that means? That big sale day right after Thanksgiving? Does that have anything to do with Christmas joy? No, maybe we could sift that out. Or what about when we get so busy with Christmas activities that we don't have any fun when we do see our friends and family? Maybe we should slow down a little bit. But you guys are here making room for Jesus and you're going to practice talking about his birth and so we have great joy today as we get closer to Christmas, even as we sift out all of the hard and sad things that get in the way. All right, I'm going to pray with you all, and then you're going to head downstairs to keep practicing your Christmas skit. All right?
Dear God, we thank you for the beauty of this time of year, and we do indeed relish all of the traditions that help us get excited about the Christ child. May we remember that it is the joy of your kingdom that we want to live in our hearts and our lives all year round. And whatever it is that isn't really about you or your word, help us to sift away all the nonsense, all the dirt, and help us find the true gold beneath. For God, we thank you for the gold that is the children of our congregation and their educators. And we ask that your spirit would bless them as they get ready to celebrate next week with their Christmas skit. We ask all of this in the name of your son, your holy child, our precious brother, Savior, and Lord, Jesus the Christ. And may all God's kids say, Amen. Amen. All right, guys, head on downstairs for your practice with Miss Elizabeth. As we <clears throat> get ready to move into our reflection on today's text, I would ask, as always, that you would join me in another moment of prayer, seeking the Spirit's blessing on our engagement with the Word of God. Holy One, your Word calls us to be a people of peace, of hope, of joy, even as we walk through a broken world, even though we are broken people ourselves, your word encourages us to return to you and remember our identity. We are your children, and you are mighty to save. So save us once more. Help us to expect your power and presence in our lives and throughout the world. And now, gracious one, I would ask that the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of each of our hearts and minds might be acceptable in your sight, for we pray it through our rock and redeemer, the word who came to dwell among us, Jesus the Christ. And may all God's people say, Amen. Today, for the second week in a row, we look at Jesus' cousin as he sought to prepare people for the first advent of our Savior. John the Baptist, of biblical fame, as he is described throughout the word, we know that he used to walk through the desert in his bare feet. Probably left his feet kind of tough, scaly, which is understandable. That hot sand and rough terrain would leave anybody's feet tough. He was also known to receive signs from God occasionally and to perform mystical feats. He subsisted on a diet of locusts and honey without access to dental hygiene that probably would have left him with somewhat bad breath. It also might have left him weak and frail as the diet wasn't particularly varied and would have required an immense intake to be remotely sustained. I guess that you could say that he was a super calloused, fragile mystic plagued with halitosis. <laughs> now that we have sifted through my nonsense, let's acknowledge what a challenging passage the lectionary places before us once every three years during Advent. Everybody join with every preacher who's ever had to preach this passage at this time of year. Merry Christmas, you brood of vipers. Ooh, makes a great greeting card, doesn't it? But I do want to encourage all of us to remember that this is a word of peace and a word of hope, even if it doesn't feel that way yet. Remember, we are a now and not yet people. We've got to give it time. We've got to let the message sink in and resonate and make sense to us. Before we dive back into the particulars of our gospel passage or the other texts for the week, I do want to lift up somewhat of a, a corollary 
In recovery programs, it is not uncommon for people to take six or more attempts at sobriety before it sticks. And then there's falling off the wagon and backsliding and getting back on track and retaining health and wellness eventually. This is, in many respects, what we want to talk about today. Sifting, walking the detox tightrope. This is what John the Baptist, the prophet Zephaniah, and in some respects, Paul in the book of Philippians are addressing today. Notice that at the beginning of today's Luke reading, John is talking primarily to fellow Jews who had fallen off the wagon. They had taken the religion of Israel, which was designed to build the people into a holy community and a representation of God's kingdom being birthed on this earth. They had taken their religion and twisted it. They had become polluted by characteristics that had nothing to do with the teachings of Mount Sinai, the prophets. So, we need to detox from our identity politics as Christians and get back to following God's word. Recognize that John says at the beginning of this very fiery but very hope-filled sermon, if you think your lineage in Abraham means anything when you're not living by it, think again. God can raise up the very stones as children. Let me put it to you this way. Just because I'm an educated, middle-class, cis, heterosexual, Caucasian, American, Christian, Protestant, pastor, male, does that mean I'm really living according to the teachings of Jesus? Just because I can identify that way? Am I producing fruit consistent with repentance? Which is what John says to his fellow Jews. You gotta sift through the garbage of feeling privileged. Anytime we claim, anytime Jews claim to be God's people, but we're not living like it, has the kingdom come? Is it coming through our lives? If we have two tunics and we don't share one with the person who has no shirt on their back, is the kingdom coming? Are we children of Abraham? Are we disciples of Jesus the Christ? The Baptist preacher, theologian, consultant for church vitality, Reverend Timothy Keller, wrote this. He said, there's no fruit in a Christian's life without rejection. In the, in the nativity, the stable is a picture of rejection. Are we willing to follow our Lord into the stable in order to bear fruit and be advocates for the people who have been rejected? Now, I mentioned today that this detox that we are called into as a now and not yet people, that detox is based on a tightrope. And I have repeated to you that John's message is challenging, but it is full of hope. And here's how. Before we feel too condemned by either the prophet Zephaniah, who called the people back into the hope of their salvation, before we feel too condemned by the words of John the Baptist, before we feel too condemned when Paul says, you need a peace that surpasses human understanding, let's recognize that condemnation comes from Satan. Conviction comes from the Holy Spirit. What's the, defin what's the difference? Condemnation says you cannot move forward. Conviction says you can and you should through my power. You will be transformed and produce fruit in keeping with repentance, as John acknowledged. As I was preparing for this message, yet again, I did stumble across some new insights, and there was a theologian at workingpreacher.org who said, you know, this scene when John asks his fellow Jews first and others later to reevaluate whether or not they're being faithful to the Lord, it's similar to when God confronts Adam in the garden. 
Who told you you were naked? The whole point here is that all we need to do is return home to the Lord who wants to redeem and restore us. Our Advent joy is that we can begin again. A tightrope that welcomes the tax collector who is taking advantage of their own people as long as they stop bilking people. An Advent joy that embraces the Roman soldiers at the end of the passage as long as they don't abuse their authority or other people made in the image of God. Also note John's humility anytime he preached, and certainly in this passage. He says, there's one coming after me who's not going to baptize you with just water like I did, but with fire to purify you. One whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. We are those who can easily become addicted to something that has nothing to do with the gospel message of Jesus the Christ. We want to sift past those things that are not consistent with the word of God or the person of our Savior. We want to find and meditate on those things which bring hope and joy and a peace that surpasses all human understanding. And it's going to take time. And we're going to trip. And we're going to backslide. And then we need to get convicted to sift through the garbage once more and start over again. For at the end of this passage in Luke, what does the author tell us? With many other words, John continued to preach the good news. Just because it's uncomfortable doesn't mean it's not good. Ours is a Lord who wants to restore the fortunes of his daughter Israel, Zephaniah tells us. May we be those who, when we are restored, share those fortunes with others, that they, they might be made whole and well. Let's make room for the coming Christ child. Give yourselves and others some time. It's now, even if it's not yet. Amen. The prayer of the church throughout the ages is come, Lord Jesus, come. Not just at the end of time, but here and now, in our life together, and then out into the world. So let's sing and pray with our hymn of response.
Amen. Please be seated. God with us, the peace of God made flesh. Peace with our holy Lord over and against our own sinfulness. Peace with our fellow human beings. For it is in the cross of Christ and at his manger that all enmity, all bitterness and division is destroyed. So as we seek more and more of the Lord's power and presence in our midst together, we do that as a reconciled and reconciling community of faith, lifting up one another's joys and concerns. Draw your attention to the back of the messenger insert, and there you'll see our updated and ongoing prayer list as of printing time on Friday. Uh, this week we have quite a number of items, and so again, if you're joining us online, you can download this for yourself at the website. Uh, beyond what you can read for yourselves, I do have um, two editions and, and one update. First of all, let's start with the joy of Advent. Yesterday morning, we had a fantastic outreach to our community. Thanks to the Outreach Committee and the Christian Education Committee, we had our annual Breakfast with Santa celebration. Uh, we had a, a great group of volunteers and people from the community, both member and non-member, returning and first-time guests. We were able not only to have some of the silly seasonal traditions, such as Santa and cookies, but also, as always, every one of these outreach events is an opportunity to build relationships with folks so that they can have a relationship with Jesus the Christ. So I thank all of our volunteers and donors and participants. Our annual Breakfast with Santa was a wonderful success yesterday. Um, another addition, uh, Angel Dotson's significant other, Mitch, was rushed to Altman yesterday, and he's actually in ICU with some severe respiratory issues. So uh, Angel would appreciate your care and concern, your intercessory prayer on Mitch's behalf. Finally, a bit of an update. You'll see at the top of our prayer list, uh, most of this remains the same, except uh, Paul did take a, a turn for the worse over the weekend. Um, and so he continues to have some challenges where um, quite possibly we're going to be delaying further uh, surgery. Um, going to look at, at some um, measures to, to keep him as well as possible. But, but Paul, uh, after starting to perk back up, um, took, took a bit of a turn for the worse over the course of the weekend. So as always, we ask God's hope and peace and strength uh, for the whole family, for Becky, uh, for Alicia and Chris and Anna, for the whole extended uh, Click clan and all those who know and love them, whether as members of this congregation, members of the community, um, or, or otherwise. Uh, please, please, please be pouring out your prayers on, on Paul's behalf. Uh, other than the items that I have mentioned or you can read for yourselves, are, are there any pressing uh, joys or concerns for the good of the church family at this time? Yes, Pat. Indeed. Thank you, Pat. Yes, um, this, the severe, severe storm damage, loss of life, destruction of property that has happened in our southern states. Um, we, we ask that, that God's comfort would be powerfully present uh, and that we would be able to be the hands and feet of Christ in whatever ways possible. Um, on, in that regard, anytime you feel like supporting disaster relief ministries, our denomination, the UCC, has a fantastic uh, method of doing that. And so you can contribute uh, both online or designated giving. United Church of Christ Disaster uh, Response Ministries. Um, again, thinking of everybody down south right now. Thank you, Pat. Anything else, folks? Sharon. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Sharon. Yeah, we're, we're grateful um, 
We know that this time of year, and certainly over the course of the last couple of years, we're all a little touchy about illness. Um, the Smiths had some off and on nonsense with, with their own health and the boys' health, but they're here today, praise the Lord. Uh, and we're grateful, again, anybody who can return in a safe way, uh, it's, it's a joy, uh, so, so thank you for that. All right, friends, anything further at this time? Let us then consecrate our conversation to Christ. Whatever is good, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is beautiful, if there is any excellence in anything, set your hearts and minds on these things and the priests of Christ, which surpasses all human understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. God, our passage from Philippians today, just a little bit further on, tells us those beautiful words. So as we struggle with our shock and our pain at earthly existence, may we also be a people who set our eyes upon the glory of your kingdom. Your kingdom as it's manifested in our fellowship in the church. Your kingdom as it's lived out in our right actions towards others. Your kingdom which is coming in fullness and glory at Christ's return. God, we want to be honest about our hurts. We want to lift up those who are wounded and experiencing difficulty, but we never want to lose the hope, the peace, certainly not the joy of being your children through our Savior, the Christ child. So, Holy One, with all the items that we have printed in black and white, those things that are rattling around in our hearts and minds that we can't give shape to with human words. We entrust all of them now to you based upon the promise of scripture that says that your spirit intercedes on our behalf with sighs and groanings too deep for human words. Receive then now, we ask, our personal, our private, our silent prayers and petitions. God, who is sometimes made known to us as a purifying fire, we ask that you would burn away all pride and selfishness. You would burn away all illness and disease. You would burn away those things that keep us divided from one another. We ask that same fire would stoke up a holy passion within us that we might lead lives in keeping with fruitful repentance. And now, O oh Lord, whether we are crying out in concern for our sisters and brothers or we're shouting hallelujah in gratitude, we renew our commitment to the will and way of Jesus the Christ, praying together the prayer he taught his own disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Amen. 
God in us and revealed in us. What great joy and privilege that is for followers of Jesus the Christ. We get to be instruments of the kingdom being manifested here and now, even as we hope expectantly for its completion in the life to come. And one of the ways that we do that practically as a faith community is we invest our resources, our time, our talents, and our treasures. And on this Sunday each month, we also make a special note to support the ministries of our denomination through our, our church's wider mission offering. Just designate that that's what you want it to go to if it's outside of uh, the, the general operating budget. My loved ones, whether it's passing out cookies and little uh, bags with, with, with Christmas decorations and letting kids see Santa, uh, or it's being together in worship and Bible study, there are so many different ways that we are manifesting the kingdom. And so for that and so much more, we want to give thanks as we now take up our tithes and our offerings. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. In continual rejoicing, we give our gifts to encourage others to rejoice. Please let our giving and giving show everyone the gentleness we know you desire from us. For you are always present, even when it feels like you are on the edge of our visions. So we pray that our tithes would help to remove worry. In thanksgiving, Now grant us wise stewardship over these things, resting in the peace you provide, which doesn't always make sense to our human minds. Allow, Allow our, our contributions, contributions and how we use them to guard the hearts and minds of Christ Jesus' followers. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Dear friends, on Sundays when we have a congregational meeting right after worship, we don't extend the benediction because the work of our faith family has not completed yet for the day. So in anticipation of wrapping things up after the congregational meeting, we want to move into our closing hymn. At the end of that, take a few minutes to uh, head out uh, and, and grab a, a quick drink of water or whatever it might be that you need and then return here so that we can have our budget meeting. Let us sing to God as we live into the promises of our coming King. Mm -hmm. 